us. That's what we're to do. We're to praise God. That's what we come here to do is to praise God. Yeah, that we had that much excitement. Hallelujah. That's the most excitement I've seen all morning. Hallelujah. We come here to praise God. If we come here and say, well, I don't like it when Brother Tommy leads worship. You came here for the wrong reason. If you come here and say, I don't like the songs they play when we worship. They're not the songs that I like. You came here for the wrong reason. If you came here and said, I can't worship God because i got stuff going on in my life right now. You came here for the wrong reason. If you come here and you think, well, I can't worship God because the devil's been defeating me and i got all this. You came here for the wrong reason. We came here to praise God. We didn't come here to worry about ourselves. It's not about us. It's not about us. It's about Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God, break me. Break me. Break me. Break me. I don't want to be cold, dead, and old. Nobody has to be. I want to be alive and vibrant. I want to be a worshipful soul. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we, yes, dear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When young folk come in here, they don't need to see a, a bunch of old dead people. They need to see a live, vibrant people that loves Jesus. And they'll say, I don't know what these folks, what these older folk got going on here, but I want some of it. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah, you see, you see that, that attitude? People look like they've been sucking on lemons. You want some of what I got? I, I don't think so. I think I'll pass. Yeah, right. I'm not, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just saying, let, let, let's, let's, let's think about what we're doing. Let's think about why we're here. Got a lot of teaching to do today. There's going to be a lot of teaching and um, we're continuing on with the same theme we've been on for the last couple of weeks. And I'm sure we'll probably cover it again next week and we may go farther into it. I don't know. Um, but we were talking last week about the faith of Christ from our text in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Some people don't like this. I'm sorry. But this scripture that I'm using out of the King James. I'm not here to slam nobody's Bible. Okay? I'm not here to... I'm just saying that this is a more correct translation from the original Greek than the modern translations because of just a couple of simple prepositions that are in it. And, and I'll, read the, I'll read our text, then I'll go into the teaching. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. I'm still alive. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. I don't live, but he lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh or in this body, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Not faith in the Son of God. I live by the faith. I, in other words, it actually, the most correct translation would say, I live in the faith of the Son of God. In the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Now, you saying that the that everywhere the Bible says that we should have faith in God is wrong? No. But this is one of the scriptures that were it says the faith of God is correctly translated. Now, why the modern translations chose to do it the other way, I don't know. I'm not going to speculate. I'm not going to go into it. I, I, don't, I don't care. I don't care what the AG says. I don't care what anybody says. I know what God says. And, and I hopefully when I get done with this teaching, y'all understand why this is such an important little preposition. Why it is different than living by the faith in God and living by the faith of the Son of God. There's a difference. Okay? This week, we're going to talk about the faith of God. Jesus Christ, which is what this scripture is talking about. The faith of the Son of God. So we're going to talk about the faith. Who is the Son of God? Jesus Christ. So we're going to talk about the faith of Jesus Christ. So let's establish something right off the bat. A Christian is someone in whom Christ dwells. Is that right? Christianity is Christ in you. That is, 
you in Christ. And that God wants to form Christ in us. And that in so doing, Christ will eventually be seen through us. Does that make sense? Okay. So this is all about Jesus. It's not about us. That's how I opened up today. It's not about us. It's about Jesus. This whole thing's about Him. It's not about us improving ourselves with Christian religion. Mm -hmm. That's what we think we're doing, don't we? Don't we think we're improving ourselves? We're getting better every day. We don't do the things we used to do. But it's not about that, really. Sure, that's part of it. But what it's about, it's about Jesus. So what exactly is the faith of the Son of God versus the faith in the Son of God? See, we have some idea of what faith in the Son of God is. And we need to have faith in the Son of God. In fact, there are more scriptures that talk about faith in the Son of God or faith in God than those that talk about the faith of God. But they are different. There is a distinction between the two. Um, We have an idea of what faith in the Son of God is, but this is something else. This is a totally different thing, and it is mentioned a number of times in the Bible. So what is the faith of the Son of God? Ah, the Son of God. Well, first of all, how does faith come to an individual? How does an individual get faith? Are you by hearing and hearing Romans 10, 17. If you're out there and you don't know that scripture by heart, look it up right quick and, and smoke it over. Romans 10, 17 says, Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Okay. So, faith comes by God's Word. It comes, and if you'll just look at the scripture, and we might all just go ahead and turn there. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. That way we can look at it. And it'll We have it here, uh, Romans 10, 17, Derek. We'll have it up here so you can look at it. It says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's that's the version we're going to be using to teach by. Okay, so there's two things that must come to be in us. We are not in ourselves equipped with faith, the God kind of faith. We're not. We're not equipped with it. We are not born with it. We're born with a capacity for faith, for a faith, a natural faith, but that faith is marred by our fallen nature, our Adamic nature. How many know that we follow the nature of Adam and not God? That's why Jesus had to come. We are under the... So so what faith we do have is marred by that Adamic nature. By that fleshly nature. You see, real faith or the God kind of faith has to come to us. What's it say? Faith cometh. It's coming. Okay? So real faith or the faith the God kind of the, the faith that God has has to come to us. And that by hearing the word of God. But it's not that simple. It's not that simple. We're going to talk about it just in more depth. Listen carefully as we go along. But only if we hear what God speaks does faith come to us. Think about this. But only if we hear what God speaks. So God must speak or there is no possibility of hearing. Right? Hearing comes by the Word of God. But if God don't speak, we don't hear. Okay? Let's think about this. This, this is gonna, there's going to be some things that are going to uh, clarify some of this as we go on. In other words, you have to have something to hear or there can be no faith. Right? So the reality of faith is in us is based upon God taking the initiative to speak truth in our hearts. Without this, there is nothing. God speaks in many ways and all that he speaks agree completely with the written word of God. So you got people all the time saying God spoke to me. I deal with them all the time. I, I don't only deal with people saying God spoke to me. I deal with people all the time wanting me to tell me what God has spoke to me about them. You know, h- hang it up. You know, hang it up. Now, if we're up here praying around the, the altar, you know, if, if, if I get a word and some of you how I have spoke to before, what I felt like I heard God say, say that's one thing. But just for walk up and say, what's God told you about me? I ain't got no word. 
You need to be listening for God to speak. And when you listen for God to speak, there's only one way to know whether it's him speaking or not. Does it line up completely, perfectly with this written word? If it doesn't, it wasn't God speaking to you. I tell you what, we've got so much going on in this charismatic world that we live in today. All kind of stuff from one end of the spectrum to the other. Believing for all kind of crazy stuff that ain't, that ain't got nothing to do with what God's plan is. We got to remember everything that we are with it, it, that surrounds our life and what we do has to do with God's plan for this earth, for His salvation, for this earth, and for this people. It's not about us. Okay, now, now He cares about us. He looks after us, but we got to have His mission and His plan in mind when we when we listen to Him. See, but not everybody hears when God speaks. Did you know that? And did you know that some refuse to hear when God speaks? Okay. See, God must take the initiative to speak to us if we have any possibility of hearing and any possibility of faith. It all must begin with God. God can speak many things and many truths, but He knows right where you are and exactly what you need. Even if you don't. We go out to eat a lot. And I'm, I'm one of these guys that I'll eat anything just about if it don't crawl off the plate. Sherry will tell you that. I'm not a picky eater. You know, I mean, I can, I can make a jam sandwich. Jam two pieces of bread together and eat it. You know, it don't matter to me. You know, I'm, Mom and Daddy told me to clean my plate and to be thankful for what Mama put on my plate when I was little. You know? And that's, that's the way that I was raised up. But uh, I was going somewhere with that. But, but God knows right where we are and right what we need. Sherry will say, what do you want to eat? And I'm like, I don't know. Pick something. She'll go to the store and say, I'm going to bring you back a, a something from the restaurant. What do you want me to bring you? I don't know. Surprise me. You know? Because it, it, don't, it don't matter. I don't know what I want. But you know what? We don't know what we want, but he knows what you want. Uh, he knows what I, mean, what I need. He knows what you need. He knows. You see, the Bible tells us that God is speaking to us. He is revealing to us his son. That's what he is revealing. He is speaking Jesus Christ to us. And that's what we need is we need a fresh revelation of who He is. A fresh revelation of who Jesus is and what it is that Jesus wants from us and wants to do through us. Turn with me to the book of Hebrews, chapter 1. Hallelujah! I'm so glad to be in the house of the Lord today. Man, I tell you what, I don't know how people don't, don't make it. You know, I don't know how they how how people that can make it don't make it. You know, maybe they don't like me or the songs I sing. I don't know. You know, but wrong reason, right? Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter one, verses one and two. The word of God says, "God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets." That's how God spoke to. The people in the Old Testament was through the prophets. But he hath in these days spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. He spoke to the people in the Old Testament through prophets. But he says today in this life that we live in in the New Testament, he has spoken to us by his Son. We have his words contained in this book. Most of them are in red. Hallelujah. And then we have quotations where people ha that actually were ministered to and given divine revelation by the Spirit of God and wrote down this record. So he's spoken to us by his Son in the New Testament. You see, God's not speaking to us a bunch of facts, things, and teachings about Christ. God is speaking to us Christ. You hear that? He's not speaking to you about 
Christ, about Jesus. He is speaking to you, Jesus. He's speaking Jesus to you. Okay, I mean, I know this is kind of hard to grasp and get hold of sometimes, but it's true. Uh, Colossians 2, 3. Says, there it is. It says, In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge? In whom are all things, and in whom all are hid all the treasures and wisdom of knowledge in Jesus. So if God is speaking to us, Christ, revealing to us his Son, and we are indeed hearing. And embracing the words which he is speaking to us, then faith will come to be in us. Well, Brother Tommy, I thought you said we got all the faith we was going to get when we got saved. Ah. I thought that you said that the Bible says that we were given a measure of faith. Yes, we are. But what this, what this does here is this teaches us not that we necessarily get more faith, but that we learn by knowing Jesus, how to appropriate the faith which is in us. See, we got a toolbox full of tools that we don't know how to use. Hmm? How many know that the tool is useless if you don't know how it works? It is. I'll tell you something that's useless to me. That's a computer. I can surf the web, and I can type a letter. And that's about the extent of it. The rest of it, you you know why it's useless? It's not that the computer's useless. I don't know how to use it very well. But if somebody teaches me how to use it, then I can be efficient with it. God's given us a toolbox full of tools. They're they're intricate, they're complicated, they're spiritual tools. But we've got to learn how to use those tools. Hallelujah. You see, to the extent that we are growing to know Christ... Faith will grow. Wow. I think I found our problem. I think I... Now, let me change it. I think I found my problem. Y'all have to judge for yourself where you're at. I think I found my problem. To the extent that we're growing to know Christ, faith will come. In other words, we are as spiritual as we want to be. Y'all agree with that? We're every bit as spiritual as we want to be. I mean, and I know I've done it before. I've looked at somebody else to whom I thought had great faith, who's a great teacher, preacher, uh, missionary, healer, evangelist, you know, that used the Word of God so skillfully. And I've I've said, man, I, I wish I could be like that. If I really wished I could be like that, guess what? I would be. See, there's our problem. We're going to know, to the extent we are growing to know him, that's how much our faith is going to grow. The faith of Jesus Christ, the faith of the Son of God, emerges from knowing Jesus Christ. Okay? God reveals Christ, we hear, and what emerges is a greater faith in us based upon the forming of Christ in us. I hate to keep making you turn back and forth. Of course, I don't really hate it, do I? I've done it to you a lot. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. This is a good scripture that points out and helps us understand the faith of Jesus Christ and why this translation is correct and it's an important thing that's overlooked by the misuse of that one little preposition, of or in. Hebrews 12, 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the what? Author and finisher of our faith. Whoa, wait a minute. (laughs) We are not the author, the source, or the originator of our faith. Who is? Did it say that we have the faith of the Son of God, or did it not? 
it said he is the originator of our faith. The author of our faith. He's the one that began it. He's the one that operated it through us. And he's the one that finished it. Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. So real faith is not of us. Jesus is the source and the completer of all faith. Wow. We're going to get into this a little deeper. It's going deeper. Just hang on. So it emerges or grows out of Christ himself. It's a byproduct of his life. It's what comes to be as we hear and see the Christ within. As we hear the living word. Wow. He said, he that hath ears, let him hear. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. We had a teaching, um, I guess it was week before last, the men, the ladies were having a ladies meeting. Sorry, ladies. We had a, a teaching on faith and cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. And that hearing that you got that we're talking about here isn't natural hearing. It's not hearing, I mean, it's just like somebody with a foreign language. You can hear them, but you can't hear them. You understand what I mean? I hear every word they're saying, but it don't make nothing. It's, it's all mumbo-jumbo to me. That's why Paul said when a man comes to church, he's supposed to stand in the pulpit and preach in tongues because nobody understands him unless there's an interpreter. Now, we're not talking about praise and worship in other tongues because that doesn't need interpretation because I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to God. But if I'm standing up here babbling in tongues, there better be somebody to interpret that thing. Or, or he says I'm a barbarian to them or they're a barbarian to me. Same thing with hearing. If I don't hear God, all I do is hear God. Mm -hmm. I can read his word and hear his word, but not hear his word. Faith comes by hearing, and this hearing, this supernatural hearing we're talking about, comes through God. He gives us the supernatural ears, but we have to be ready to receive this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So if faith comes by hearing, then the faith of Christ comes by the realization of Christ. Note, on one hand... We talk about having faith in God, right? And we do, and we better, right? We usually think of faith in God as some, us sort of sending our faith up to God. You ever feel that way? That's what that means? Having faith in God, we're sending our faith up to God. Listen to what we got to say here, and this, this will make sense to you. We, we, or we must muster up some faith, right, out of ourselves based on our trust in God, that's how we do it. And send it up to God for the purpose of establishing a relationship or for the purpose of Him giving us some type of help. That's how we operate as humans. We think that we've got to work up our faith. Huh? Wow. And send it up to God. And if we work up enough faith, He'll hear us. Or we work up enough faith, we'll get what we need or desire. Okay. It, this is not what this is talking about. You see, the faith of Jesus is something different than having faith in. Or what we just talked about. It's trying to muster up faith. Rather than, than faith that is from out of ourselves up to God, the faith of Jesus Christ is the faith that is out of Him. Mm-hmm. It is faith that grows as he grows and is formed in us. The faith of Christ is formed in us. Important scripture, Galatians 4.19. Important scripture. We quoted this last week, maybe the week before. We'll probably quote it again because it is, it's important. Galatians 4.19 says, My little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. The Apostle Paul said, I'm having birth pains. 
I'm pregnant with something and I'm going to be that way until Christ is formed in you. That's how much I ache for you. That's how much I ache to see Christ formed in you. Who is he talking to? Sinners? No. He's talking to the church at Galatia. In other words, we know Jesus when we're saved, when we ask him to, to forgive us our sins and he comes in. But he don't stop there. He has to come in and take up ground and take up ground, right? He has to come in and he has to conquer. We used to, oh, glory to God, we used to sing an old chorus years ago. Jesus be the Lord of all. Jesus be the Lord of all. Jesus be the Lord of all. The kingdoms of my heart. You keep your hearts, you're bigger inside than your own outside. Did you know that? There's kingdoms in there. You got wicked kings sitting on thrones, ruling. That's what Jesus is doing. He's knocking those kings off their thrones as we live. He's toppling those kingdoms. Hey, he's taking up ground, glory to God. And he's setting up his kingdom in there. Why? To get us to heaven? No, that's already taken care of. That's done in my spirit. He's doing it to make us better people so that we can serve him better and we can perform his plan in this earth. And I got to be sold out to him to get there. I got to be sold out to him if I really want to see, if I really want to understand this, what God is speaking to me and what he wants to do to me. I mean, it's not about, it. there's so many petty things that people get tied up in when they talk about faith in God. And what's God speaking to me? Some, I mean, I hear the, the most fanciful things you, you can imagine in your life that I'm sure God's not even concerned with. You have to be kind to people, though, sometimes. You know? Sometimes you don't. <laughs> but, but nevertheless, it's just, just fanciful stuff, you know. I mean, God, I, that's not what God's concerned with His plan. You know, and you're part of His plan. Now, he's looking after us along the way, yes. But we can't get things that we want to consume upon our own lusts tied up in the way. Right? God will hear you if you ask according to his will. And that we don't ask amiss, according to James, that we might consume it on our own lust. That's when we hear from God, and that's when we know God speaks to us, is when we're asking according to His will, according to His plan, and we're operating in what His plan is for this earth. And i got to get moving, guys. Hallelujah. Okay, back to Galatians 2.20. Along with the help of some other passages, i got a paraphrase that I copied here that someone wrote, and, I, and I, I'll mention the guy's name when we're done with this particular study that I appreciate so much. I've, I've been able to use some writings of his to uh, get a lot of information on this, and it has been really blessed for me. He said, I'm crucified with Christ, first of all. An actual death has come to my old man and Adam. Old things are passed away. My old man is crucified with him. That is the body of, that is the body of sin might be destroyed. That is finished. Then Paul said, nevertheless, I live because I was planted into his death. I am planted and made one with him in his resurrection. I am dead and my life is hid with Christ in God. Colossians, the Colossians 3, 3. I am dead. See, we got to realize that. You're a walking dead man. You're carrying about a body of death. And they're, they're, the, the old man, he don't exist no more. He's dead. Satan's trying to animate him like a puppet and resurrect him all the time. He's dead. We're somebody else. We've got to realize who that somebody else is that we are and, lear and learn to function and walk in him. He said, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Good part. God has not given me a thing called life. 
That's what we think. God's given me life. He's not given me a thing called life. He has given me Christ himself. Hallelujah. Christ is my life. I don't just have life. I have Jesus. And because I have Jesus, I have life. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is our life. See, I'm one with Christ in spirit. Right? Sealed until the day of redemption. That's where God's at. He's in my spirit. I am one with Christ in my spirit. Christ is in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, in this flesh, I live by the faith, I live in the faith of the Son of God. Because Christ is in me, the outworking is that Christ is also being formed in me and into a greater maturity. That's what our growing in Christ is about. It's not necessarily about us learning to not do things that we're not supposed to do. Although we still want to do them. It's about Jesus growing and maturing in you and then him outworking. Hallelujah. As Christ is being formed in me and I am growing to know him, I learn to appropriate the faith that is in me. But this faith is not from me. It's from the life of Christ. The faith of the Son of God. The faith of the Son of God is the result of the Son of God being formed in us or us knowing Him. God is speaking His Son to us. If we hear Him, it's not just a greater theological knowledge that we receive, but the form of, of Christ in us, growing of Him in our hearts and in our consciousness, God consciousness. You know, something I can say is I can remember being baptized in the Holy Ghost. I can remember well where I was at, who I was with, the preacher that laid hands. I can remember all of it. And I remember after being baptized in the Holy Ghost, having this awesome God consciousness that I didn't have before. Maybe that doesn't work to everybody that way. I don't know, but I did. It seemed like word before I knew about God and He was over there somewhere, but now I knew He was here. And I just had this consciousness of Him all the time. And that's what, that's what Christ growing in us does. It brings about God consciousness. See, faith comes to be by knowing Christ. But He is the source, not ourselves. He is the author of our faith. The faith of Jesus Christ is not a matter of Christ taking us over and believing for us. No. It is based on the faith that is out of Christ, which is based on our knowing Him. The life I now live is Christ living in me. That's the difference. And that is the life I live in the faith of the Son of God. It's a oneness of life and purpose. Picture Christ having faith, intent, and purpose. That was the life of Christ, wasn't it? A life of, a life of faith, a life of intent, and a life of purpose. Christ was our supreme example of faith. And he had intent, didn't he? He didn't just walk around like I do many times, just waiting for life to happen. He had intent. And he had a purpose in his life. Wow. I mean, that, that's an important thing for us to have. But picture the will of God. Paul is saying that as he grows, know Christ, that he'll know God's mind and God's will. As he grows to know Christ, he'll know God's mind and he'll know God's will. If you know God's mind and you knew God's will, then you can walk with faith, with intent, and with purpose. See, he'll, he will live in the faith of Christ because he knows truth. He knows God. We can have the faith of Jesus Christ only for that which Jesus has faith for. Let me say that again. That's such a good statement. 
We can have the faith of Christ, what we're talking about, only for that which Jesus has faith for. Huh. Maybe Jesus ain't got faith for a Cadillac in a mansion right now in my life. I, that's my favorite too, because that just that just man. I mean, there's so much of that been on TV that it just makes you want to gag, you know, Cadillac in a mansion. Yeah, he maybe got maybe Jesus don't have faith for Cadillac in a mansion in my life. So I can only have faith for what Jesus has faith for if I've got the faith of Christ, right? But I guarantee you what. If I have faith for what he has faith for, it's going to happen. It will come to pass. You can't miss it. Ain't that right, Brother Ivy? Hallelujah. Glory to God. If we have faith for what he has faith for. See, that's the problem. We want to do it according to our will, not his. The faith of Jesus lives and moves only in the truth. And in the will of God. It all comes back to, to, to asking according to his will, right? Paul knew that this is how Christ lived in him. In spirit and in truth and in the full will of God. That's how he lives in me. That's how he lives in you. Because Paul had come to know Christ and desire the truth, the faith of Jesus Christ could eat more easily live and move through him. See, Paul could live in the faith of the Son of God, his will and intent was one with that of Jesus Christ. When your will and your intent is one with that of Jesus Christ, then that opens up all these scriptures that we've looked at over the past months where he said, if you say to the mountain, be thou removed, and it will be cast into sea. If he said, if you pray in anything that you ask when you pray, it will be done of the Father which is in heaven. No questions asked. And we wonder why that's not taking place. Maybe I don't have enough faith. No, I'll tell you what's wrong. We're not asking according to his will and intent. And we're not being one with Jesus Christ. Because when that's, that's what it's all about. Back to Cadillacs and mansions. And that can mean anything. Y'all understand what that means when I say that. Not back to Cadillacs and mansions. He's not saying, believe me for Cadillacs and mansions and you'll get what you want. He's saying, when you believe and you ask according to my will, when you're one with my intent, one with my purpose, one with my focus of what I want in this earth, and you ask it, bam, it'll happen. Amen? Hallelujah. Well, I hope that helps some. Um, next week, we're going to talk about real faith. It may be a little shorter than this one, but uh, every time I say that, it ends up being long, don't it? But, uh,